Hey guys, how's it going? So I know I'm a little bit late to the game on this one, but I finally got my hands on the Nocta Macro Simplex. I've been wanting to try one of these for a while because I've heard a lot of good things about them and the price is right. I wanted to pick one up for a couple of reasons. Number one, my grandkids are getting into the hobby and I don't really trust turning them loose with my 900 plus dollar machines because they're kind of rough on them. And the other reason is a lot of times when I'm out detecting, people will come up and say, hey, I'm interested in the hobby. What do you recommend for a good starter machine? I'm sure you guys get a lot of that too, but I don't like to recommend a machine until I've had a chance to try it for myself. So there's that. Uh, right off the bat, I gotta tell you, man, I'm kind of blown away. For $250, $254 I think I paid for this detector, you get a lot for your money. I wasn't expecting it to feel as high quality as it does. It's put together really well, good materials, and it actually has some features that aren't found on my higher end machines. For example, it has backlit buttons, which feel really good. I think that's a great idea. Number two, it has built-in vibration. The thing has, uh, even has a flashlight. I can't tell you how many times I've been out hunting and the sun goes down. I wasn't quite ready to quit yet, so that could prove to be useful. Uh, it is waterproof, down to 10 feet, and it runs at 12 kilohertz, which is a good middle of the road frequency for coins and relics. Uh, get you the high and low conductors. Uh, the menu is easy to navigate. It's, it is exactly what the name says. It's simple to use. I uh, really like how it collapses down so far. You could probably fit that in a backpack if you wanted to. You're just getting a lot of detector for the money, I think. Uh, recovery speed is good. Depth is good. Now, this isn't a full review. I'm, this is just uh, basically a first impressions video. I will post a full review over on the Friendly Metal Detecting Forum once I put about 50 hours on it. But I gotta tell you, I'm blown away so far. And I'm not on the Nocta payroll, and I didn't get this detector for free. I paid for it with my own money, so I'm gonna shoot straight with you. For $254, this one's gonna be hard to beat. As always, every time I get a new machine, I like to air test some common targets to get an idea of, of what they'll read on the meter. So I'm gonna test some coins, some jewelry, some relics, and some common trash items. If that's something you're interested in, stick around. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Okay, before we get started, I'll give you a quick look at the display, the controls, and the settings. First, we'll start with the buttons. Here we have a left, right, up, and down button used for making selections. Uh, the down button doubles as your power button. Over here on the left, we have your pinpoint button and your accept and reject button. And this also doubles as what you would use to ground balance. On the right here, we have your settings button, and we'll go into that now. Your first setting is your detector volume. You have four levels there. And that's something I forgot to mention earlier. I'm not crazy about how this thing is timed. If you don't make your selection quickly, it defaults back to the main screen. I'd rather see this set up in a way so that it stays in the menu mode until you press the button again. But anyway, moving back to the menu, that's your volume. Next one up is your ground balance and you can do that manually or automatically. Next one up is your iron volume, and that's another really good feature of this machine for the price. You have three levels there. Following that is where you would accept and reject the VDIs. Next one up is where you can offset the frequency. If you're getting some interference from your pinpointer, you can offset to F1 or F3. I have noticed that this machine doesn't really get along with my pro pointer, so I'll probably need to make an adjustment there. Next one up is uh, how you connect to your wireless headphones. On zero, you're gonna hear the sound through your detector speaker, but as you turn it up, it automatically connects to your headphones and that's where you adjust the volume. Okay. The next one up is where you turn vibration mode on and off. After that, we have our uh, backlight adjustment. You have four levels of brightness and the A is auto mode. So when you hit a button, it comes on and after a few seconds, it turns off by itself. Okay, and finally, the last one is where you turn your flashlight on and off. Okay, up here to the left side, this is your sensitivity level. I have it turned all the way down while I'm doing the video. On the right side, this is your depth meter. You'll see little chevrons there once you have a target under the coal and each one of those represents about two inches. Of course, here in the middle is where your VDI will, will display. Uh, across the top here is a scale of accepted and rejected VDI numbers. And here, just below that, is your program mode. This one is all metal. 
The next one over is field mode. The one we're in now is park mode, which is a three-tone mode. And the last one is beach mode. All right, guys, stand by, and we'll get started with the target ID test. Okay, we'll start out with some coins. First up is a modern zinc penny. Comes in at a 67. Next up is a wheat penny. Hopefully you can see these, it's cloudy and rainy today. 77. Next up is, a, I think, an 1885 Indian head penny. 60. Next up, we'll do some nickels. This is just a modern Jefferson. 25. This one's a Buffalo nickel. 24. Next up is a V or Liberty nickel. 23. Next up is a shield nickel, 23, 24, and finally a silver war nickel, 25. All right, next up we'll do a clad dime, 78, 79. Next up is a barber dime. Eighty one, eighty two. Next up is a clad quarter. Ninety one. A barber quarter. Ninety two. Clad half dollar, 94, 95, a barber half dollar, 95, Morgan silver dollar, 96, and finally a $20 gold double eagle. 76. Next up, we'll do some relics. This is a solid cast Confederate block eye button. That one comes in at a 70. Next up is a great seal button. 67, 68. This is an older variety of the great seal button. 85, 86. Marines cuff button. All of those are two piece with the exception of the cast block eye. Next up is a 58 caliber three ring mini. 64, 65. Round musket ball, I don't know the caliber. 66. Now we'll move on to some jewelry. Gold wedding ring, I think this one's 14 karat. 1920. Here's another gold wedding band, this one's 10 karat. 23. There's a woman's silver ring. 73, 74. And here's a smaller child sterling silver ring. 67 or 68. Next up, we'll do a few trash items. First up, Corona cap.
jumping around a little bit, 74 or so. Rusty bottle cap. 55 to 65. There's a flattened rusty bottle cap. Square tab. Regular pull tab. And just the beaver tail from a pull tab. Big iron washer. Big square nail. Half of a horseshoe. And finally, a big piece of flat iron. Well, there you have it, the Nocta Micro Simplex, a detector that, in my opinion, punches well above its weight class. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Happy hunting, and I'll see you next time.